And I think that goes back to this conditioning that we see. This um, this egocentric uh, thought process too. Mm-hmm. Th- that's that gets put out there. This push of the conditioning through materialistic things that feeds the ego, that grows the ego out of proportion. Right. Hold on, James. Yep. That that really skews mindsets to not uniting, right? To not um, using empathy, not using sympathy, not using compassion, right? That being, and then, and that even being ostracized itself, mm-hmm. right? As, oh, you being a simp or, uh, oh, you know, uh, you know, how can you relate? I don't like that mindset either of how can we relate because when you say that you close the door uh to letting people in i think Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. but i think that like a lot of that and i was talking with somebody about this a little bit earlier and it's that when you're told that your experience is invalid for so long yeah i mean not not just like in your own lifetime literal decades and centuries Centuries. exactly (laughs) your experience is not valid your experience doesn't matter Mm. the way the world is whatever you're saying you're just essentially when people you know say because this this whole situation is not it's not new community absolutely not we've had conversations in high school about this Ethan. you know and well before i was born this shit was going on you know what i mean the communities of color have been have been talking about since before any of us were born. All right, this is ancient history in our country, right? This is like foundational stuff. This is the foundation. That's the problem. Exactly. That's the problem. It is the foundation, mm-hmm. which, which leads me to my next topic that I want to jump on because we're, we're spending a lot of time, at, you know, mm-hmm. rightfully so, on a lot of these topics. Uh, yeah. Reparations. Mm. I want to talk about reparations. Um, so I had some thoughts about this uh, in, you know, uh, this is just my thoughts and opinions. Mm-hmm. Um, take it for what you, what you will, right? So for me, I think that uh, there, you know, America has built the foundation on the biggest sin that, you know, we all know it's there, but we don't want to address, right? To heal, right? We have to, the country has to admit it mm-hmm. first and foremost, right? And I think in a form of admit admittance should be reparations. And I think personally, an idea that came to my head was there should be um, uh, it should come in the form of in, interest rates for loans mm-hmm. on education. And I think this should be across the board 1.5% interest for education, for land ownership, for uh, mortgages, buying houses, uh, and small business loans. Because ownership and equity is unbelievably important, right? Uh, And when that's taken away, especially, you know, somebody gets in the washing machine of the industrial prison complex, right? And that's taken away. And, and this should be, you know, no matter what law you broke or there should be no, that should be just across the board, clean. That's what it is. 1.5% interest on all of those things. Right. Um, and available to, you know, all African-American people. Right. Um, I think that that could really turn the tide for the displacement of um, of wealth, you know, in this country. Mm-hmm. And, and the thought of ownership, the thought of, you know, uh, equity and everything else. And, 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 you know, the opportunity for education, um, I think, uh, in the loans that are there, right? That's, that's a whole nother cycle uh, you know i'm still paying ridiculous metal loans uh, <laughs> um 
that's a whole other cycle which we could talk about. I think on a later date. Uh, <laughs> but um, what are your thoughts on all of that? Um, Bob Johnson, who used to uh, on BT, he said uh, we should get reparations in the sum of seven trillion dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if which, it happens, which rightfully so. I think rightfully so, but I don't think that that laws will be passed uh, because it's like, where's it going to come from? Where's the taxes? Blah, 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 blah. Right, right. So if it happens, great. Do I, I expect them to do that, knowing that if they did do that, then that would be the end of their power. I just don't see that happening. But I see us taking our own reparations in the form of, something as simple as not being exploited anymore. Because again, like I said in the beginning of the conversation, we're the most valuable product on the market, on the planet. Yeah. And when we realize that and we sell ourselves versus like letting somebody else sell us, Mm -hmm. then we'll have trillions of dollars a year because trillions of dollars are spent every year on black people, but the money don't go to black people. Mm -hmm. right so we just need to be in control of ourselves and not let anybody tell us you know like like get rid of these ideas in the nba ownership i I own players and i got the right to trade you and you know it's still that same slave oh absolutely and and i hate to say this and somebody said this when i was watching the uh the draft in um the nfl combine and they were comparing it to basically like uh, the slave trade. That's what like, it is. When I heard that, I and I watched, I watched it, and it's like, it's literally a visual. Of what was going it's on a visual, yeah. At picnics, you got these big, strong men, and you're saying, which one can I get my the most bang for my buck? Well, this one right here, he got seven years on his career, but he can still get rebounds for you. The same way they were saying, well. This one, 50 years old, but he still got good knees. So he might be good for you on that barn. It's the mm-hmm. same thing. It just looks a little prettier because they gave us a check. Right. It's amazing those athletes up there don't recognize that. that they got they athletes, don't they, recognize it. They if they see that check. If they uh, said we're not playing another game until we see the whole system change, it will work. <laughs> oh, it will work. Yes. Man, yep. they start their own league. You yep. can't. Yes. You can't recreate <laughs> another LeBron James that doesn't exist do nowhere this. else. Right. It can be done. We can start our own league. Yeah. Ice Cube is do- three on three, and they taking some of his rules and mm-hmm. trying to apply it to the NBA. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Which I was, I was an advocate for watching the three on three league. They it's love three league. Yeah. We do and what we bring, they yeah. know the value of us. Oh, well, absolutely. They're like, oh, this guy's got great ideas. Let me whoink, whoink, Exactly, whoink. exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sell it back to no you. No credit for that either. Exactly. Can't get no check for that. Can't go get no recognition mm-hmm. for that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what, what's, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? Get, get a lawyer and then start start like, a lawsuit oh, against the NBA? Idea. That's what it's going to be. That's what it always is. Yeah. You know, and, and also, it ain't just America that owes us money. The whole world owes us. The whole world. That part. Well, if you if you look back at history too, we all were born from there. The first human was Africa. found in South Africa, right? Mm-hmm. But also, even during the slave trade, the builders of Europe came from Africa. The builders of Asia were imported from Africa. The builders of South America, Mexico were imported from Africa. So everywhere you see a civilization, it got some of my blood in. So if we want to talk about reparations, I need to get a check from everybody. <laughs> but <laughs> but since, we're not, since we're not trying to do that, it's like let's just become aware of ourselves and then we'll be getting the value that we know we should have because we've already realized that value within ourselves. And then the system and then society can keep going because, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, 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 I just ended there. No, I think that's well said, and I think it's, I think it, it you can summarize it in in the in the way of self sufficiency being the ultimate power. Mm. 
you know, uh, in an active way. And turning that self-sufficiency into an active thing is something that, you know, is hard to take away from you. They took it I away. But they have taken it away. They really self-sufficiency was in, in Tulsa and Rosewood. When they mm. snapped Black Wall Street. Because of the damn planet because they didn't want them being self-sufficient. Mm. That, I, would think, I think, would be one of the best things we could do to be self-sufficient. Build our own. It maybe not necessarily. Don't you come in? Like they can hear me. May not hear you. She can hear you. She can hear you. I see your face to hear you. Come on in. Hey, <laughs> give, give us some light. Give us some whole, light. Hey, girl, give us so some light. All of that. The whole um. Here. The whole we'll do a little day. How they took, situation. How they wiped Tulsa off the face of the planet. That's right. We we don't. I. I don't want to say we don't need to build our own city. We don't need to market it that way. But you got all these athletes, all this damn money. Michael Jordan finally decided to give back after everybody bought up all your damn shoes in the hood. But now you want to give back some. Which I wish. The span of a decade. I wish right. Michael Britt was on right now. He, he Jordan, has so Jordan, much to say about that. Jordan was a little slow on the uptake on that, but whatever. Better late than never. Right. <laughs> but that's one of the things you can do between him, LeBron, uh, Kobe's estate. Uh, P. Diddy, he's trying to do his thing. Jay Z, all of them, everybody's trying to do their own thing. All of that, they could very easily. Who was it? Steph Curry and P. Diddy was talking about buying the Panthers. I don't know what happened with that, but that kind of felt that we need a we need a black owner in the NFL. All the damn Man. players is black. I don't understand how you ain't. You got what four black coaches in that whole league? Were there any black slave masters? I guess. Uh, I guess slave owners in America. Well, there was a couple. There's a slave, there's a slave, there's a slave owner. <laughs> I know I know the history, but I'm just, just to make my point, though, right? But, yeah. But like I'm saying, like, if we would all, especially in California, rather than stacking us, up, stacking us up on top of each other, like plates after Thanksgiving, eventually that shit's going to topple over and it's going to crash. Mm-hmm. Instead of doing that, you got all that land between everybody that's been to Vegas, between here and Barstow, between Barstow and Las Vegas, you got all of that land, the Antelope Valley, all of that land. Build that up. Build up a new Tulsa. And, and in all of these states, these states and these cities, you have all this vacant land, and they claim we're overpopulated. We're overpopulated because you're putting us all in the same damn spot. Expand. You got all this land. You just build it up out there. That could be our new Tulsa. Mm. We got our own our own police stations. We got our own grocery stores, our mm. own hospitals, our own I got all of that. Do all of that. Don't market it that way because the second you say, well, this is predominantly for black people, they're going to find a way to weasel their asses in there. Burn that shit down. And burn that shit to the ground. They're going to find a way to do that, but mm-hmm. start that. Do it on the deal if you have to, but start something like that and slowly have people start going out there. You get your own doctor, your own surgeon, your own idea. Everybody, you get them all out there and you build up that way. They ain't going to give us nothing, which has been proven. They are not going to give us nothing. They ain't going to make it easy for us to get nothing. I remember my grandmother moved out there from Chicago in 73. She tried to get a loan for her house just to, to build some things. They rejected her for a $5,000 loan. Punk ass $5,000 loan. We know why they did. Bank of America back in the day, they got hit for denying black people loans, small, simple loans. They ain't going to give you nothing. You got to take it. You have the means already. You got all these athletes with all this money. You want to give back to the community. Thank you, LeBron, for the school in Akron and whatever else he did. Thank you, Jordan, with your late ass for finally giving back. <laughs> it's all kind of stuff they could do. I mean, I get, I get it's easy for me to say they can do this. I ain't the one with the money. It's easy for me to say that. But y'all want to make a difference in your communities. You are not just athletes. You ain't going to just shut up and play. You want to do something. This is something you can do. Everybody keep talking about, well, you just an athlete, be quiet. But Drew Brees say the shit. Oh, he has an opinion. He matters. He don't matter no more than the rest of them if that's the way you want to play it. Right. But because they are figureheads in their communities. They are people that young kids look up to. Do a little more with the assets that you have. Mm-hmm. We, we as regular people, unfortunately, we can't afford to help build the damn community but we can show and move in it once it's built we can help right. keep it clean we can help grow the community we can help establish it in, in, in different ways uh, outside of giving massive amounts of money to it but that's how we can we can take back and we can we can start on we can be self-sufficient because I, I, I'm sure there's communities out there like that now but there's only so much they're given especially if they gotta ask the government for it because when they find out, oh, this is a black person, this is a predominantly black community, hmm, let's tie them up in this loan. Let's make it real difficult for them to get this. Let's draw this shit out until they lose interest and they don't want it anymore. That's why I think the reparations, specifically on those interest rates yeah. and it being illegal to deny those, 
would really turn the tide of power. I think if they too, if they help make it, if they stop making it so difficult for us to get the things in the first place, stop making it so who who got hit for it? Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, whatever damn the mortgage company, them companies Just bailed the fuck out like them. But they got they got hit because they were making it so difficult for minorities to get the loans. And then when they were getting them, when the housing market flipped, most a lot of people that were losing their homes was the black folks because they gave you shit that you they knew you couldn't afford. The variable interest rate yeah, loans. Yeah, they knew they were gonna come snatch that All that you. bullshit. Yeah. That that Bush put in, yeah. into play yeah. that Obama made illegal. Right, got rid of all of that as soon as he got in office, and then the first day, because Jen and I were looking for a condo. Oh, Trump did that. Yeah, Trump first it. day. Yeah. <laughs> this is a lot of the stuff, you know, his circus show and everything like that that he that he puts in front of you. The first day he got in office, took away those loans. He, he took away. Yeah, he made it more difficult for you to get home loans. The lower percentages, I think. But yeah. I ain't surprised. I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised. He's a. Yeah. I mean, he's a landlord, right? That's what he was originally. So that's yeah. the first day. In an office, yeah, and white people that look like us in his in his places. Yeah, no, I mean, he's, there's literally a history of it. Yeah. It's a printed yeah. in paper. <laughs> he flat out said that. Yeah, <laughs> that's my twenty five cent Natalie. I'm out. I see y'all. He's, oh, come on. <laughs> I'm drop it. Drop it. <laughs> I need another quarter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> look at that. Um, uh, that you know that that image that that was just on camera. That's. Not the whole solution, but that's part of a solution as well. Um, With them too? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look what y'all created together. <laughs> We're Jacks here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, baby got, that baby got beautiful melanin. Man. That's right. It's hard. I wish a little bit more so we could say that. Like that. Yeah, in California, man. You know, he needs a little bit more than that. Shit. <laughs> But but the 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 ideas of racism and hatred um, coming from where they like going to the root of where that comes from like ancient times people weren't there was no such thing as white people no. that was no. that was an idea that came later that made people feel like they need to be empowered over somebody else you yeah know? what what is a white person anyways really. <clears throat> Yeah, Are you a European person from European what? American. From what different? Right. You know what I mean? Like right. the whole idea of that's fucking stupid. Yeah. The, from the hailing from the Caucasus Mountains. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> quote, 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 white people created the idea of white people. They created the idea of black people. They created the idea of uh, mm -hmm. South America. You know. Uh, oh, yeah. Everything else. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's a, yeah. a hyphen in it without a hyphen, right? Yeah, no, I mean, that's a legitimate uh, student lecture by an anthropologist from UC. And he said, you know, he was talking about, you know, the, the thing is with like different races, people think of races, but there's no real like, there's no biological races. That's not a thing. He's like, we're all. Well, it's, it's a distraction. Right. It's and, a distraction for control. That's what race is. Right. And I mean, he went on to talk about, you know, different studies that talked about, you know, the statistical differences between what we call races and there's a you know there's a test that you know you can look at the analysis analysis of variance is what it's called and he said you know when you look at different races we can see that there are less differences between groups than there are within a group of course if you control for the things that are within a group there are less differences between the between the things between the different groups than there are within the group, right? So, I mean, it's it's really, it's it's mind boggling. And again, I think it all boils down to, I know I sound a little bit conspiracy theorist, but like, there is a, and I hate to like even, you know. Hey, go ahead, say it. Go ahead. I don't know, I hate to even quote, you know, like, you know, there, there are different scriptures, right? All throughout the world or whatever. But like, you know, we are probably all most familiar with the Bible. And it talks about different principalities that are at work, right? That are in the world working towards something that is not good. And like I think that that principality for us is this this there's an there's an elite in this country in the world. That used to be conspiracy theory, but it's proven fact now. It's not like a, it's not like a meme. Well, well, check this out. What's the definition of conspiracy? That the definition, if you Google it, says 
a quiet private secret group who has ill intent to do harm dude and they are here they they have been yeah. here and i mean i think that they're they're the cause behind a lot of the shit that we deal with nowadays but like you know we have to we have to wake each other up to that and i think that that is you know one of the most important goals that we can have you know as as the people right now is to wake up mm -hmm. each other, try to get each other because they know they can't beat us all but if they can put us against each other they don't have to worry about beating us all absolutely yeah, of course you know what i'm saying so it's it's art of war tactics right it's, it's, it's straight up sun tzu <laughs> Auto war tactics is what they're implementing. 100%. Mind, mind control. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And you Which know is, what's funny though? At being on, just to hit on just like conspiracy theories and what we finding out. What oh, we we'll, have, we'll, have, we'll have a whole nother episode of that that, you know, is going to be great. I'm really looking forward to it. What I'm saying is that <laughs> at, at, at um, December 31st, 2019, 12, 11.59, I said, here comes, oh, Happy New Year. That's old shit. 2020, that clear vision. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're shit. right. We got it. Oh, we we are definitely 2020 vision. We are oh. seeing the mm, interesting. We are seeing what it really is and what we yeah. are really thought of, what people really think about us and how mm -hmm. it's treated. And the world is now seeing, right? Yeah. And they're reacting too. You they're and, reacting. Reacting. and they're protesting. We thought perfect, perfect vision. We right. thought 2020 vision was like, oh yeah, it's gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna see my dreams. Like, nah, the universe, like, nah, I'm gonna show you exactly. <laughs> show what you reality, reality here. Right, right. Oh.